Okay, let's look at problem D, which is paint bucket. So this problem is a flood fill problem. Basically, we have to, um, given a cell, determine all the other cells that should be colored the same color, um, similar to a paint bucket tool in Photoshop or some other image editor. And you can see an example down here, figure one, figure two, where you click on the upper left red pixel. And when you do that, all of the following cells are turned green. Um, we don't ever go diagonally though. So th there's a bit of a formal description about what's going on down here, um, where we, we click on a pixel with some color, every adjacent pixel um, of the same group should be colored the, the same as well. Okay, so let's look at the input. The input is four integers on the first line, width, height, x, and y, so where the user clicked. And our coordinate system goes from top left to bottom right. So then the next lines have the pixel color values at each coordinate. So let's take a look at the sample input to understand what's going on. Here we have a 5x5 five five image. They click at 0, 0. And we can see that this is the first row of pixels. This is the second row. And everything here is zeros. And then these are all ones. And then zeros again on this side. So what should happen here is that the top triangle here should be colored the same color and we need to output looks like all the different coordinates and the output also kind of describes describes this as well um, each line of the output should be the coordinate that changes color due to the click so we're printing out all of the coordinates of this upper triangle with this sample output and it's important to note that we first sort by the y value and then the x value. So we're sorting by the row that we're in and then the column. So 0, 0 corresponds to this. 1, 0 corresponds to this one. 2, 0 corresponds to here. 3, 0. And then 0, 1 corresponds to this because we're on the x is 0, so the first column and y is 1, meaning the second row. Then there's a few input restrictions. These basically are just saying that um, we won't have to deal with anything greater than 1000 by 1000, and the click will be within the actual image. And the color is between 0 and 100. So at this point, I'm going to assume that you are able to read in this input into, say, a 2D array. I'll just show you very quickly how I've done it. As you can see, I'm reading in the width, height, x, and y from the first line right here. And then I'm reading in the rest of the picture and all of the colors on each line with this for loop. What I want to focus on, though, is the algorithm that we need to use to solve this problem. So the algorithm we're going to use is called a flood fill algorithm. It's very similar to a BFS, if you've ever seen that. But instead of searching for an element, instead we're just trying to find all of the elements that match a given criteria. So let's do a very simple example. In this example, we have a very small picture and a click at 0, 0. That means that we know that our color must be 1, because that is the color at 0, 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at our click point and then explore all of the adjacent elements and see if they're the correct color. And if they are, we'll add them to this to explore list. And we'll keep doing that until we run out of things to explore. So let's just step through this example. First, we add 00, zero to our explore list. And when we explore 00, zero, we'll look at the adjacent cells and see if they're 1. And if they are, we'll add them to our explore list. Now, we have to also move 00, zero 
down into the explored list when we do this. So now let's explore 01. So that's this cell right here. When we look up, we see 00. So we'll add that again to our explore list. Eventually, we'll check to make sure that it's not in our explored list already. But for now, we'll just go ahead and blanket add it. Additionally, we will add 11, but we will not add 02 because that's the wrong color. Now we do the same for 10. This time, we've added three new elements to explore 00, 11, and 21. Now we'll explore 00 again. However, this time what we'll notice is that it's already in the explored list, so we're just going to skip it. We're going to remove it from our list. When we explore 11, we will add both 01 and 10 to our explore list again, but eventually those will be ignored. So let's just Go ahead and eliminate 11 from up here and add it down in our explored list. We're going to continue on explore 00. Again, it's already been seen. Explore 11, already been seen. But then we'll see 21. We will explore it and we will add again 10, but we will also explore it and add it to our explored list. Eventually, Everything that needs to be explored will be in this list, so the rest of the elements in the to explore list will already be explored, and then the loop will end because we don't actually do anything when we see something in this list that's already in this list down here. After you've gotten this whole explored list, then we just have to print everything out. Now we're going to look at this in code. The first thing that we need to do is set up our to explore, explored, and initial color variables. Note that I'm using a set instead of a list for the explored list. This just allows for deduplication and faster existence checks. Now I'm going to loop until the to explore list is empty, and each time this loop runs, I'm going to pull an element from the to explore list. Here I'm using the pop function which takes the front element of the list in Python. The first thing to check is to make sure that we haven't seen this coordinate before. And if we have, we will just continue on to the next iteration of the loop. We also have to add this coordinate to the explored list. Next, we have to determine which of the adjacent cells we need to add to the to explore list. First, we'll check to the left, but we can only do that when the x coordinate is greater than 0. Otherwise, when we do p of x minus 1, we would go out of bounds. One quick note about the coordinate system with picture is that you have to use yx because y is the row and x is the column in your 2D array. But back down to this if statement, if we can go left, we'll look left and see if it's the correct color. And if it is, then we'll add that to the to explore list. Next, we'll look to the right. Note that this is very similar to looking to the left, except for this time we're doing plus one here and here. And the check is that we aren't at the end of the list minus one. Basically meaning as long as we aren't the rightmost column, we should be able to look to the right and see if the color matches. Now we can do something very similar to this except for the y coordinate. If we go ahead and print our explored set after the loop, we'll find that it gives us the right answer, but it will just be in the wrong format. 
And actually, I have a small bug why I didn't capitalize this X and Y here, this X and Y here, as well as this W and this H down here. Now when we run it, we get the correct set of points. This paint bucket example, by the way, is the example that we did over here. So 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, and then both 0, 1, and 1, 1 are all included in this output. Now we just need to format it correctly. And to do that, I'm just going to use a for loop over the sorted explored set. So as you can see, I'm sorting the explored set with this function. Uh, and the function basically just reverses the tuple and uses the y coordinate and then the x coordinate as specified in the output specification in the problem. Now when I run this, you can see that it's outputted in the correct format. And just to prove to you that this works, it's accepted. I think the most valuable part from this problem is learning about the flood fill algorithm. It and variants of it, such as BFS or DFS, are very common computer science problems.